to all of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world. Welcome to another George Estenlob show, tonight, Unshackled. We'll be featuring the Matilda Wright story in just a little while. We invite you to sit back, relax, and listen. I hope this radio show will be an inspiration to you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope your Saturday went well. I know ours was busy, but nonetheless, with that on-air light lit up, I have to say that very carefully, when the on-air light lit up, it just refreshes us here on the George Dustin Lobb Show. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, that's 7 a.m. Eastern Time, we will be playing another episode of Unshackled, and in just a little while, we'll let you know what that episode will be. If you would like to write Unshackled, which is a ministry of Pacific Garden Mission out of Chicago, Illinois, just simply write to Unshackled. 1458 South Canal, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Their telephone number is 312-492-9410. Check out their website. A lot of good information, both historical and present. Go there and read all about it. Unshackled.org, simply unshackled.org. Or you could email them, unshackled, that's unshackled at pgm.org. And whichever way you might choose to contact them, tell them. Tell them that you heard Unshackled right here on the George Espinlob Show on the Spreaker Network. 
We too would like to hear from you. George C.E. George C.E. at Comcast.net. George C.E. at Comcast.net. And tell us, let us know that you heard Unshackled right here on the George Espinlove Show. Don't be afraid to email us. We love to get email. And we answer everyone that we get. And yes, we have getting tremendous response and we're so glad for each and every one of you that's been writing to us and we will immediately reply back to you a lot of good things happen around here and i trust that you'll keep hanging with us because we just keep moving along and our radio program just continues to evolve hang in there stay with us it's exciting we're going somewhere, and it's going to be exciting to find out how we get there and what it's all about.
Out of the cross, Tina Weber. I thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight, wherever you might be. And while you're listening to us on whatever listening device you are listening on, call a friend, email a friend, holler across the hedge, shout it off your porch. I'd tell you to climb on your rooftop and give it a shout, but don't try that. You might fall off. Whatever means or ways that you have of communicating with people, get a hold of them and tell them that Unshackled is on the air on the George Espinlob Show on the Spreaker Network. And tomorrow morning, We'll be back at 7 a.m. That's 7 a.m. Eastern Time with another episode of Unshackled, and this is what you'll hear. Fred Smith wanted success as an actor so badly that frustration hurt him and his family. His wife, Janie, couldn't seem to help him. Don't miss the true dramatization of Who Did Help Him, another true story coming soon from the classic files of Unshackled. And you'll hear tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on the George Espinlove Show, the Fred and Janie Smith story. So tune in. We have tested and tested and retested and retested and tweaked our Skype project that we've been working on and we are happy to announce that we have completed all of our tests we have tweaked it to where it is working just beautifully I better knock on wood so I'll knock on the side of my head we're going to begin to use Skype here very 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 soon sometime next week I hope we're going to start using Skype and we are going to give you the number that you can call in and you can ask our guest questions you will hear me you will hear our guest our guest will hear you the guest will hear me I will hear both of you And together, all three of us will be heard by people around the world. And it took us a while to get this thing just right, but with the help of others from, excuse me, from outside sources, from right here amongst us, we have been able to get this thing, and we believe that we got it just right. So you can start telling people, that we're going to start using Skype and we'll be able to have people call into the show and they can converse, ask questions, they can intermingle with us, and please don't be afraid to participate in the show. So if you don't have Skype on your computer, your tablet, your phone, whatever device you use, if you don't have Skype on your device yet before let's say before the sun goes down tonight 
but there are lots of places where the sun's still shining. As soon as you get a chance, put Skype, download Skype on your iPhone, on your Droid system, on your tablets, on your computer, on your desktop, whatever you might have, whatever you use the most, download Skype and make it a point, make it a point to come on the George Espinlob Show. This is your time. You can ask questions. We will by no means, and I want to emphasize this, we will by no means ever embarrass you, humiliate you, tear you down, or make you feel bad. We will not do that ever. You have my word on that. We want men and women, boys and girls, friends, Romans, and countrymen around this world to communicate with us by the way of Skype right here on the George Espinlob Show. We do realize, we do understand that at first, it will probably be slow. I hope I'm wrong. But at first, it may be slow as far as participation goes. But eventually, if we just keep with it, hang in there, I believe that in time, and I hope a very short period of time, that men and women will be calling on Skype and we'll have them lined up. We're going to have some roundtable discussions with people from across the nation and around the world, all at the same time. Isn't that amazing? All at the same time. And you'll be able to hear that roundtable discussion. We have one that is going to be set up soon, I hope soon, in the next several weeks, whereas we can get... uh, Uh, a fellow from Ireland, a fellow from New Jersey, and a fellow from Italy, all on at the same time, and then, and then, have the capability, which we do now, of having our guests call in and asking these, one of these three guests, or all three of them, questions that you might have. So, just hang in there with us. Skype is here, and we are going to utilize it and we are going to have a great time here on the George Espinlob Show. With no further ado, we're going to take you into another exciting episode of Unshackled, and you're going to hear the Matilda Wright story. Sit back and listen to old-time radio in the 21st century. How do you do? 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 Every day we make dozens, maybe hundreds of decisions that affect our lives one way or another. For decades, the woman in this story seemed to make bad decisions that complicated things and led to suffering. And then she made the best decision of her life. And ever since that day, she's had a counselor to guide her. She makes the right decisions now because her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Quiet down and listen to me, class. I have your final grades. I'm happy to say all of you passed your typing class this year, except for one girl who failed, and she is sitting in the back of the room. Shining the light of the world into the darkness, this is Unshackled. True life stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. When a man or woman becomes homeless for any reason, they lose more than a home. They lose the opportunity to change their circumstances. And without an address, it's hard to get a job. Without a way to clean up, it's easy to lose hope. Well, Pacific Garden Mission provides the way to restore these unfortunate ones. Thanks to financial gifts from caring friends, the mission offers food, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep. Even medical and dental care are given in the mission clinic and all free. Pastors and counselors share the good news of God's love that changes lives, like the woman in this story. And now for broadcast around the earth, here's program number 2,967 in the series Unshackled. 
the program that makes you face yourself and think. Tilly, it's dumb to quit school now. You only have a year to go. I don't care, Dad. I, I flunked typing class. I'm never going back. How come you flunked? Because I don't learn as fast as the other kids. Well, typing's not important, Tilly. G- g- get over it. I'll never get over what that teacher did. She told the whole class I was the only one who failed. I could have crawled in a hole. But but don't you see? You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You don't understand. If you're foolish enough to quit when you're that close to graduating, then you get yourself a job. The woman in our story was 17 when she quit school. One of seven children, she felt unloved and misunderstood at home. And her doubt and fear took her down to the pit of despondency. This is the true testimony of Matilda Wright and how she found peace right now on Unshackled. I don't believe my family ever understood the empty feeling I had so many years of my life. I never felt loved by my mother, never knew why she seemed so unhappy with me. I wanted to take dancing lessons, but she refused. I wanted to play with a girl across the street. She wouldn't let me. I felt like everyone in my family ridiculed everything I did. I tried to hide my weird feelings until I realized they knew. I worked in a factory after I quit school, but at 21, I was still confused and anxious. Then friends of my parents asked me to write their nephew in Italy, something my mother encouraged. I don't see why you don't go to Italy and meet him, Tilly. They just want me to marry him so he'll come here and take over their business. What's wrong with that? What if he doesn't love me? At least he'll be able to provide for you. I'm scared to go there alone, Mom. You said two of his aunts will go with you. I want you to go, too. I won't go unless you go with me. All right, I'll go. We spent a month in Italy, and I fell in love with that man, so we married. But he stayed in Italy, and I returned to America. When he arrived four months later, I discovered he was a drunk who caroused every night, making my life a nightmare. I begged my mother to let me come back home. You've only been living together for seven months, Tilly. You haven't even tried to make your marriage work. I have, Mom. He's the one who hasn't tried. He deceived me. Why do you say things like that? It's true. He married me so he could come here and party. He goes out every night drinking and chasing women. You don't know that. I do. I see the evidence. Well, there must be something you could do differently. No. He wants a divorce. Don't give it to him. I don't want to be married to him. Oh, please. I want to come home. All right, come home. But don't agree to a divorce yet. We did divorce, and I went back to work. I felt as if I were always doing things to please other people. A year later, I began dating a nice man, but he was killed in an accident on the job. Angry at God for snatching someone who cared about me, I decided to have a baby, someone to love. So I got my own apartment and began running around with that neighbor girl that my mother wouldn't let me play with when I was 12. Soon I became immoral, just like my friends. Desperation drove me home again. I might have known this would happen. What's wrong now? Mom, I need help. I feel like I'm, I'm going to fall apart, and, I, and I, I, I can't go on like this. Like what? I just told you, I'm afraid I'll go to pieces and no one will help me. Please take me to a doctor. A psychiatrist? You're nuts. Yes, I know. I, I need help. You don't need help. Just do what's right and don't worry about it. Mom, you've got to take me to the hospital. I can't go on! What I really needed long ago was to be assured that my mother loved me. Reluctantly, she took me to the doctor. It turned out I was pregnant, 
and I was thrilled because I thought a baby would fill the emptiness in my life. But after my daughter was born, I had a complete nervous breakdown and got shock treatment, spending six weeks in a psychiatric ward. When I was well enough, I went back to work, which didn't please my parents. Tilly, you can't be a mother to that baby and hold down a job, too. Yes, I can, Dad. Mom's going to watch her while I work. Well, why don't you let someone adopt her? How can you say something like that? There are a lot of couples who can't have children, and they can provide a proper home they for her. They can't have my child. Dad, I love her. Your dad's right, Tilly. It might be better to let her go. Kids need a dad and a mom. I'm keeping her. She might be the only child I'll ever have. Having a child didn't fill that gaping hole in my heart. I felt that my parents were stealing my daughter's love because they were with her all the time. Through a girl at work, I met a man and began dating again. We were together every night, and one night I violated my parents' rules with him. The next day, my father came home from work furious. You had no right to let that man stay here. I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to. It won't happen again. Y you're right about that. Since you're seeing him every night anyway, you might as well get married. Well, he hasn't asked me. We'll see that he does. We married soon after that time, and I got pregnant right away. After my second daughter was born, once again I had a breakdown and had to spend seven weeks in a psychiatric ward. My doctor told me to get a surgical procedure that would prevent future pregnancies because I would not survive another breakdown. So I complied. My husband adopted my first daughter, but he became increasingly moody and abusive, and we lived down the street from my parents, so I talked to my mother about him. You have to try to get along with him, Tilly. I do, Mom. He's cruel to the girls. He says they're intruders. Is he abusing them? Oh, I won't let him, but he beats me instead. He beats you? Yeah. Oh. He always seemed like such a nice man. He always stops for beer on the way home. He sits there in those bars. He listens to the guys complain about their wives. And then he comes home in this foul mood. Well, it isn't right for him to beat you. Please let me come home, Mom. I'm afraid of him. My daughters and I lived with my parents for a while and then moved into a low-income project. My husband and I were separated for a year and a half. During that time, I was drawn into a cult church. When someone suggested I give my husband another chance, I did. We moved to Michigan to start over, and my savings got us a place to live. But my life with him was worse than ever. I tried to hide the hurt, but people at the church noticed. What's wrong, Tilly? Oh, I don't know what to do anymore. Is it your husband? Yes. He's walked away from all his responsibilities. Well, he has a job, doesn't he? Yeah, but he only gives me $12 for all of our needs. $12 won't buy anything. Canned goods, but he won't pay the utilities, so I can't even heat them. Oh, that's terrible. Well, it's the alcohol. He comes home so ugly that I lock the girls and me in our room at night. Well, maybe you should go back to your parents. I don't have any money. We used all my savings to get a place to live. Well, look, we'll pay the bus fare, and we'll even take it to the bus station. I was grateful for their help and chose instead to go to Reading, Pennsylvania, where my sister and her husband lived. His brother was a charming person who had never been married. We became friends. My need for love was overwhelming. So we began dating, and soon the relationship was serious. My sister talked to me about our decision. Tilly, how can you think of marrying him? We care about each other, and my divorce is final. But he's so immature. He can't take care of a family. He's very good with my children. That's the problem. He's childlike himself. <laughs> I like that about him. He doesn't have a real job, Tilly. Oh, he'll get one. You don't understand. Trying to take care of a family will make his problems very obvious to you. And by then it'll be too late. 
If only I had listened. After we married, the demands of a family made him violent. Once he took off his belt and he beat me in front of the children. I was determined to make the marriage work, so I suggested we go back to Alabama, where he had family. There he got even worse. Soon he took up with young girls there and ignored us completely. I agonized with despair. When I could no longer bear the pain, I took my daughters to Georgia, where we lived in a trailer court. Safe, I thought. But this momentary peace was soon eclipsed by more bad decisions. And we'll hear about those decisions in just a moment. Giving thanks is something most of us don't do often enough, but we could not have sustained this ministry without the help of many others to whom we are grateful, especially God who provides all things. He brings each homeless guest, each person who sends financial gifts, each volunteer who comes to help us, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the radio stations that broadcast this program, the listeners who tune in, the prayer band that prays for us, and those who write seeking your guidance. The medical staff and volunteers who join us in this service. All have made the old lighthouse a refuge that shines in a darkening world. Thank you for each life that's been transformed by this ministry. This Thanksgiving, we hope you give thanks to God for your blessings and remember the homeless at Pacific Garden Mission. To join us in this endeavor, you may send your gift or food contributions to Pacific Garden Mission at our new address, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Donations can also be made on our website at unshackled.org. All I wanted was someone to love me, someone who would understand me and love my children as I did. That someone was right there all the time, but I didn't know. The woman who owned the trailer court had a son who was divorced with three children, and one day he knocked at my door. Hi, hey, you must be Tilly. Yes. Who are you? Larson. I thought Mother had told you about me. Oh, yes. Yes, she did. Well, I just came by to welcome you. If there's anything you need, let me know. I'm fine. Well, she said you're alone. I like being alone. Well, it's peaceful. Well, Mom said you were separated from your husband, so you might need a man to help out. Although he lived elsewhere, he kept popping in to see how I was doing. At first, his visits were on the light side. I brought my kids to meet your kids. Well, there's more room at my house for the kids to play. Let's go there. Well, that way you and I can spend more time together. Why don't you move in with me, Tilly? You'll save money and we can all be together. Living together was wrong. I loved my daughters, but I was no different from any other woman who puts her own needs ahead of her children. His children had no respect for me or my girls. So one day while he was working, I left for North Carolina. My first stop was the welfare office where a social worker took us to a place for the night. Here we are. This place looks like it belongs in a scary movie. Well, it's all we have left. We had to take care of lots of people tonight. Are you sure we'll be safe here? It's so dark and isolated. Don't worry, you'll be perfectly safe. Other families have spent the night here. My daughters were tired and slept in our room, but I tried to stay awake because of that spooky house. Every sound, every snatch of conversation I heard outside my door seemed like a threat. The next morning, I hurried back to that social worker and asked for another place to stay. There's nowhere else you can go. Oh, there has to be. I can't spend another night in that house. 
Well, I can put you in a boarding house, but not the kids. We'll have to separate you. Put your children in foster care. No, my daughters and I, we've never been separated. All right. I'll let you make two calls to find someone who will take you in. They'll have to pay the fare for you to go there. Otherwise, you have to do things our way and put your children in foster care. I called the man I had left. He acted as if he had been looking for me, as if he cared. The reality was far different. How come you bugged out like that without telling me? Your kids don't respect me. Yeah, well, whose fault is that? You could make them treat me better, but you don't care. Not anymore. I can't live with you, Tilly. You're crazy taking off like that. Oh, I didn't see any other choice. My kids want you gone for good. Where can we go? I don't care. If you don't leave, I'll have you commit it and you'll lose your kids. I called my sister, whose husband paid for the bus fare for us to go live with them in Florida. He also loaned me the money to buy a car so I could work. And he didn't expect me to pay for living with them. Just told me to save my money. So I did. Then one day he was angry with me and said that I wasn't fit to have children. The welfare ought to take them. Frightened and foolish, I packed our clothes and left, driving 700 miles away. We survived for a week before I called my sister. Where are you, Tilly? In Johnstown, Florida. Johnstown? Why did you leave without telling us? I was afraid you'd call welfare and come and take my kids. Oh, we wouldn't do that. After what your husband said, I wasn't sure. You should think about someone besides yourself, Tilly. We had no idea what happened to you. That isn't right. I suppose he's real mad at me now. Why shouldn't he be? He helped you a lot, and that's how you repaid him. Everybody's mad at me. Even my girls. They want to be with you. You should come back. You know, when I was on the road, I realized that I could be killed at any time, and then who would take care of my girl? Well, you shouldn't be out there on your own. I guess I made another bad decision. I went back and found an apartment and a job, but life was difficult. I started drinking to fill the emptiness in my life, and that certainly didn't help. My father had died and my mother came to Florida every winter for several months. Are you doing okay, Tilly? It's a struggle, Mom. You know, I was wondering, when you go back to Pennsylvania, could we go with you? Aren't you happy here? Well, I need to work. There's really no one to watch the girls. Oh, I see. They'd be happier there. I'm hoping you could watch them while I work. Oh, of course. I'm so afraid to drive all the way up there by myself, but I could follow you in my car. Well, it doesn't always work, you know. What? Moving to change your life. A change has to come from within. That February, we moved north again. I followed my mother with my youngest daughter while the oldest one rode with Mom. I was 38 years old at the time. I stayed with mom, but the only work I could get was cleaning houses. Over time, I got to know a woman who came to my mother's house selling beauty products. She was a Christian and seemed to have so much peace. I cleaned her house, too. Because I was so despondent, I called her at 5.30 one morning. Elsie, it's Tilly. I'm sorry to call you so early. It's okay, Tilly. I was already up. I'm calling because I feel so alone. I'm so down. I'm sorry to hear that, Tilly. I've made so many mistakes, so many bad decisions. The Lord can make and keep things right for you if you let him. I feel so guilty. I put my daughters through so much over the years. Oh, but you love them. I can see that. You tried. If you only knew how many times I took terrible risks and put them in danger. The Lord was watching over you. I was always looking for someone to love me, but I never found what I was looking for. All those years, all, all those men, I should have been searching for God. Well, we're in darkness before we come to Jesus, trapped in trespasses and sin. But God loves you. And he has been drawing you to himself. Do you think so? I know so. The Bible is God's word. 
And that's what it says. I wish I had your peace and, and assurance. Tilly, find a good church near you, one that teaches the Bible, and start going. You've helped me a lot already, Elsie. Thank you. We are borrowed people to each other, Tilly. God brings others into our lives to draw us to him also. His purposes are always good. Remember that. Talking with her was my first encounter with biblical truth. But my mental state was so despondent that I was hospitalized again for two weeks. When I came home for the weekend, life was bleak. My oldest daughter by then was 21. Oh, hi, Mom. Glad you're home again. Just for the weekend. You seem very up. Oh, I got saved while you were gone. Saved from what? I gave my life to Jesus. That's what it means to be saved? Yes. It's also called being born again. You have a glow about you. I've never seen this before. Put there by Jesus, Mom. I don't know a lot about it yet, but I know this. Jesus saves, and Jesus loves you. I never thought of that. No, well, not many people do. You have to repent of your sins and then put your faith and trust in the Savior. That's what I did. That's all? Ask him to forgive you. I did, and I feel so different inside, at peace. Peace was something I had never known and something I desperately needed. I wanted to have that glow and feel the way she did. There was a church about 12 blocks from my mother's house, so I looked in the phone book, and the pastor's home number was listed. I called him. I'm not at the church on Saturday. I was hoping I could talk with you. Do you need counseling? Yes. I feel so lost, so down. I've been in the hospital for my emotional problems. Well, come to our church, and I'll meet you, and we can talk, okay? How can I help you, Tilly? My daughter tells me she's born again. I want to know what that means. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Do you know that the Bible is God's word? Yes, I believe that. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, Tilly, the devil blinds your mind to the things of God because he wants you to walk in darkness, never coming to the light that is Christ Jesus. God created all things and gave man dominion over everything that's upon the earth. But man gave control to Satan in the Garden of Eden when he sinned against God. I remember hearing that. Right then and there, God promised to send a Savior to mankind so that we could have a relationship with him forever. God waited a long time, but the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. I'm not sure I understand all of that. Tilly, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. Do you believe that? Yes, and I feel so guilty. That's good. Good, we're all guilty. That's the only attitude we can have for our sins. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the good news. Because God loves us. He sent Jesus to die for our sins. He took our place on the cross. Now you can have God's forgiveness. For everything? Yes. What do I have to do? Repent of your sin. Ask God to forgive you and ask him to give you eternal life because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Surrender your life to him. Because Jesus is the one who died for you. I went home, sat at the kitchen table, and wept as I thought about what Jesus did for me. I repented all of my sins and asked him to save me. He did. As many of my sins came to mind, I asked his forgiveness. And then I started reading the Bible, and the words were so alive. I learned so many wonderful things to guide me in life. I still do. I was 46 years old when Jesus saved me. Today I'm 71 and more in love with him than ever. He helped restore relationships with my daughters. 
And I live on my own, helping others instead of taking from them. That's how it is when Jesus gives us new life. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That rest, that peace can be yours, listening friend. All you have to do is turn from the world to the Savior who died for you. There's no special prayer. God looks on the heart. If you need help in making this life-changing decision for Christ, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. Our telephone number in Chicago area, 312-922-1462. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. And visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. What a privilege to have you spend this time with us. We hope you invite others to listen and tell them when and how. To keep this program on the air in your area, please remember to thank the manager of this station for bringing you Unshackled. This is program number 2967. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Hearing from you brightens our day, so please write soon. The address, Simply Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. Area 312-922-1462. Someone is waiting for your call. 312-922-1462. Pacific Garden Mission has moved, and therefore our new telephone number is 312-492-9410. Again, that new number is enjoyed that episode of Unshackled, the Matilda Wright story. I do want to say what I always say when we air Unshackled. It's a delight. Believe me, it's a delight to be a part of this fine, fine organization. Oh, they don't know us other than We are a radio outlet, but yet we are a part of them, and they are a part of us. We asked if we could air their radio show, and they graciously said yes. And we are so privileged to be able to bring you Unshackled Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time and again 7 a.m. Sunday morning Eastern Time. And now and then, periodically, we bring Unshackled on the air sometimes during the week. We just, uh, we just play a special edition of Unshackled. But I hope you enjoyed tonight's show, tonight's story. And tell a friend that you heard Unshackled right here on the George Espinlob Show on the Spreaker Network and email us, George C E. That's George C E at Comcast.net. George C E at Comcast.net. 
Let me give you the address, the telephone number, the website, and the email for the Pacific Garden Mission one more time. If you want to write to them, simply address your letter to Unshackled, 1458 South Canal, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. If you'd like to call them, their telephone number is 312-492-9410. Their website is unshackled.org, and their email is unshackled at pgm.org. And if you choose to write them, email them, or call them, just mention to them that you heard Unshackled right here on the George Espen Lobb Show. And we thank you for tuning in. Tell a friend, bring a friend, be a friend.
Take it to the cross. Take it to the cross. Take it to the cross and lay it down. There you find. Fred Smith wanted success as an actor so badly that frustration hurt him and his family. His wife, Janie, couldn't seem to help him. Don't miss the true dramatization of Who Did Help Him, another true story coming soon from the classic files of Unshackled. And that true story will be aired tomorrow morning. That's tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on the George Espinlob Show on the Spreaker Network. Hey, listen, do, do me a favor. Uh, n- not only email us, George C.E., that's George C.E. at Comcast.net, George C.E. at Comcast.net. Not, not only email us, but go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. Again, Go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R dot com and sign in. It just, you know, we, we, we sign in for all kind of stuff nowadays. We sign into Facebook. We sign into this. We sign into that. And you could even use your Facebook uh, uh, sign in name, your password, you know, just, just like most other places you can now. But go in and become one of our followers. I think we're close to 300 followers now. Uh, but just just become one of our followers. Just go to Spreaker.com. And then uh, up there in that little little uh, search box, type in the George Espenlob Show, E-S-P-E-N-L-A-U-B, the George Espenlob Show. And then, you know, things will pop up and you can do that. And... Whatever you're listening to tonight, if you're listening to us off of our Facebook page or our blog page or our radio show page, uh, that that little gizmo there with with my two heads uh, down there on the bottom, I think to the right hand side, it 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 talks about the chat room, and uh, then over there on the toward the left hand side, it says something like fans or something. You can click on there, and that'll take you into Spreaker, and you can do the same thing. But become a follower. Just go to Spreaker.com. That's Spreaker.com. And then up there in that little search box, just type in the George Espinlob Show, and then become a follower. doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to buy anything. 
You don't have to sign anything. All you do is is hook up, and that's it. But regardless whether you come into Spreaker and follow us or not, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for following us on the George Uspenlob Show each and every night. We are getting some great reports from people, and I thank you for your kind words and all of your support. Thank you so very much. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Pop Pop X7. At Pop Pop X7. Follow us on Twitter. As we always say, or as I always say, <clears throat> I have no idea where I'm going. Just follow me and we'll we'll go somewhere. Visit us on Facebook. You become my friend, I become your friend, and we all know how that works. Uh, just look me up on Facebook. There's all kind of ways, six ways from last week to reach people nowadays. And so hook up with us, follow us, tweet us, uh, Facebook us, uh, Google us, whatever it might be. Send us a carrier pigeon with a message on his feet. We'll read it, and we'll hook them back up and <laughs> send them back to you. How's, how's that? It's been a tremendous week. Tomorrow we start a brand new week. But this one has been a tremendous week. We have had such great shows all week long. Tomorrow we're going to wind it up, start it all over again. And I just know, I know down deep inside of my soul that we're going to have another tremendous week of broadcasting just ahead of us. I really, really thank you for tuning in tonight, hanging with us, and listening to Unshackled. Remember, each and every program, every episode is available for download absolutely free. So bring it down. Put it on whatever device you want to put it on, but download it. Tell your friends about us, The George Espinlob Show, Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Saturday night, Unshackled, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sunday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Seven days a week, we're broadcasting something. But tell someone, tell everyone about us. Thank you for hanging with us. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed the Matilda Wright story. Another exciting episode of Unshackled. Brought to you by Pacific Garden Mission out of Chicago, Illinois. Give them a call. Write them a letter. Email them. And go to their website. Unshackled.org. Unshackled.org. They are doing a tremendous work for men and women, boys and girls. And they've been at it a long, long time. You've been listening to Old Time Radio in the 21st century. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you tune in tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Spreaker Network. And we'll bring you another episode of Unshackled. There's a whole lot of love coming to you from this place. Yes, there is. Email us, George C.E., George C.E. at Comcast.net, George C.E. at Comcast.net, and we'll be sure to reply. Wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, you have a fine, fine night. If it's already tomorrow, excuse me, if it's already tomorrow, then you have a fine, fine day. But regardless of where you're at and what it is, just remember, we care about you. We really do. So until tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, I want you to stay safe. I want you to be kind. And I want you to come back and listen to us again tomorrow morning. So until then, this is George Espinlob saying, 
good night. And God bless you. Good night, everybody. Yeah.